Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week at Everything You Need to Know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news investors are watching bond markets. And the bond markets are wondering what the narrowing of the yield curves signal. Typically, a yield curve flattening is a prelude to inversion, which has been a reliable signal that a growth phase is about to end and a period of retrenchment and recession is imminent. The last time there was a rate inversion, that is long rates are lower than short term rates, was in 2005, which lasted until 2007 before the prediction came true with the 2008-09 recession. But there was a noticeable lag. Today that yield curve is shrinking, but is not yet inverted. The Fed's push to raise benchmark interest rates to normal is gathering steam and markets are accepting that there will be at least two more rate rises in 2018, possibly three, and now some are talking of four. That is putting strong upward pressure on the short end. The long end is also rising but not as fast, so the difference is narrowing. The economic growth phase in the world economy has now extended to approach 10 years and it is unusual growth can be maintained longer without a sharp and often painful correction. The fact that the US authorities are squandering their recession-fighting firepower is of special concern, so investors worry that the next downturn will have extra bite. In China, other factors are at play, including the effects of the trade tussle with the US. But the yield curve is falling fast. The authorities there have capricious powers to shift market signals, but this is one they will find hard to manoeuvre over the long run. In the World Bank and the IMF are having their annual meetings at present, and they're both singing warning songs, songs that seem out of tune with the real global economy. Their own forecasts show growth will next year will expand. But they know the tide will turn at some point, and that time is closer than markets, the markets think, they argue. The sudden rise in commodity prices recently is unlikely to be sustained and can itself signal a sharp reversal. Rising debt levels, both household and government, are also behind their concerns. Without monetary and fiscal tools available, the next official responses to the downturn will be weak. New Zealand is in a particularly good position, however. We do have plenty of fiscal headroom, and the household debt is overstated by including some substantial business debt, mainly for residential landlording businesses. So the real load here is lower at 136%, and that compares, and that's much lower than com comparable other countries. Australia, for example, has a 200% load. And we have some monetary policy headroom. But given our exposure to trade, that headroom won't actually last very long if the US, China and Europe sneeze. We need grown-ups operating the world's largest economies, and sadly that is lacking. Other than us, no one is repairing the roof while the sun is shining. At least in Australia, they're tackling the corrosive issues in their financial services industry. That patch will have important implications here. The US 10-year yield is still rising, is now at 2.92%. That's up five basis points today. The US 210 curve, however, is holding. The Chinese 10-year is still sinking fast and now at 3.53%. That's eight basis points lower today, while the New Zealand equivalent is 2 0.87%, up three basis points. The sinking yield in China is now catching up with them. Their 210 curve has shrunk markedly today. Gold is at $1,345 an ounce in New York today, down $6. The oil prices are basically unchanged overnight and it's still just on $68 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just over $73.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar has retreated further, and this morning is at 72.7 US cents. This is down 100 basis points in a week. On the cross rates, we're at 94 Aussie cents and 58.9 euro cents. That puts the TWI at 73.9, its lowest in three weeks. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.